So in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to model this simple part. And I'm going to show you my thought process, how I go through uh, creating a model, why I might want to use dynamic data, or why I might not want to use dynamic, dynamic data. So first things first, let's show you which version of FreeCAD I'm using. I'm still using 0.20.2, which is the latest release. And it seems to work pretty well. I'm waiting on the uh, next release. When that comes out, we'll upgrade. But for now, I'm going to stick with what's available to you guys. Uh, when you look at my screen, I'm usually in part design already. So when you start up, you may start in a different screen uh, or a different workbench. And a lot of times you're going to be in this workbench, the start workbench. So don't worry about that. If you're in there, you can just go here and go into the part design workbench. And then you'll be in the same workbench that I usually start from. Now, if we want to get rid of this start page, because I don't actually use it that way. So I'm going to just get rid of the start page and off we go. Now I've got my mouse ready so that we can get started. So first thing, we're going to look at the drawing and that drawing basically shows uh, an L shape and it has a boss on it and a couple of holes in it. And they're all dimensioned. It's something that I just measured up quickly, um, put some dimensions on. I can see already when I look at that, that there's a good way to do this in one piece. I don't ever need the two, two parts of the L to be different widths, so I can make that as one piece. So let me show you how I do it, and then you guys can decide if that's some, something you would have done, or you can decide how you might have done it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rough shape. And so we're going to create a new file. We're going to create a part. We're going to create a body. And then inside this body, we're going to create a sketch. And I'm just going to do it in this XZ plane. You can do it in any plane you like. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to do everything oriented around this origin. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a polyline. And I'm just going to create that L shape. So I'm going to come off here. I want that to be horizontal. I want that to be vertical. I want that to be horizontal. Come down here. Back to that point there. And then we'll close it. And that is my basic shape. So now I'm going to close that. And I'm going to extrude that or pad that. And I'm going to pad it, and I'm going to do it symmetric around the plane. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that sort of something like what we're looking for. So that's good. Notice I didn't add any dimensions. I'm just putting the basic shape together first, and then I'm going to create some dimensions for it. So I can go back in here, back into the pad, reopen the sketch, and then I'm going to put on these first dimensions. So I'm going to take this one. I'll dimension this. I can see from the drawing that that should be five millimeters. And we'll say OK. And I can see that the thickness is the same the whole way through. So I'm going to just say that this one and this one are equal. And then I can see that this length here should be 60. So we're going to make that 60. And this length here should be 55. So we'll make that 55. And if we close that, and we make this um, pad here, Instead of it being 24, we're going to make it 30. Because that's what it's calling for. That is now the size of the L that we drew. OK, perfect. Now, thinking about this, do we need to make it dynamic? Well, I would say, when I consider that, what am I going to use this for? If it's a one-off, and I'm only going to use it once, and it's always going to be this size, of course, I'm not going to use dynamic data. But if it's something I might want to tweak, or I might want in different sizes, or I might want to make multiples of them in different sizes, or, or just slightly different sizes, 
then yes, I would use dynamic data. So let's do that. Okay, so to do dynamic data, what we need to do is go into the dynamic data workbench and we're gonna add a, an object, which is our dynamic data object. And then we're gonna add some dimensions. So we're gonna do a length and we'll call this one uh, width. And that'll be the width of our L. And we'll say apply. And then we want to make a second one, which will be thickness. We'll say apply. And notice I'm not putting any values in yet. I haven't added any dimensions. You can do that now or you can do that later on. So I'll show you how we do one um, now. So uh, we have our thickness, we have our width. And we're going to have our height. And that height would be 55. And we'll apply that. And then we're going to have our length. It'll actually just be called length. And that's 60 for now. And we'll apply that. So, OK. And here's all our um, parameters here, all our dynamic data. And I can just go in there and I can say that length that we were looking at is, um, oh wait, I have two lengths. Hold on one second. We'll change that. Okay, so if I want to get rid of this length one, I'll just hit this delete something, click on that DD length one and get rid of it. I don't, I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. So we have our thickness, we have our height, our width, our thickness is five. So we can make that 5, and our width is 30 for now, and we'll make that our width. So there we have all the dynamic data with all the dimensions in it already, and we can move from there. Okay, so let's apply that dynamic data to our sketch. So if I go into the sketch, and I know this one here, I'm going to edit him, go in here, we'll say DD, and this one is our height. So now that's a dynamic data for height. And if I go back here so I can see my dynamic data, we have our length. So that's going to be this one. DD dot DD length. So that's assigned. We'll do this one. Is our DD dot the thickness and then we'll close that and now we'll go to our pad and we'll make this one dd dot dd width and now we have a dynamic piece that we can change this dynamic data and it will all change this L. So let's put on the boss. That's going to be the next part. So I'm going back to my part design. I want to create a new sketch. I'm going to create it so I can put the boss on. So here's a new sketch. It's going to be in that YZ plane. And turn my model back on because it conveniently turns it off. We don't like that. Then I'm just going to um, show the sectional view so I can see this center line. And then my boss is literally a, a piece like this with a hole in it. And I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to pad that. And once again, I have the boss. It's actually drawn on the plane, which is actually on this side, so you can probably see it from the back. And that boss then, we are gonna make uh, the size we want it with the dynamic data. So we're gonna add dynamic data. And we can add a new dynamic data group, or we can just add 
more dynamic data to this group, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back in my dynamic data workbench, and I'm going to add a property. And this one is going to be diameter. Actually, I'm going to call it outside diameter, outside dia. And that outside diameter is 10. So I can put that in, apply that. And I'm going to say inside diameter. And that's 5. Apply that. And then I want to say boss height. So I'm going to call it boss height. And that is also five. Say OK. Actually, we can say cancel. And that way it won't make that spurious length one. So now I'll go back into that sketch. And I'll dimension this. I'm going to call that dd dot dd outside diameter. And then this one here, we are going to call dd dot dd inside diameter. And we also need to position it, but for now, I'm just going to close that. Here's my boss. Here's my pad. So I'm going to take that pad and make that dd dot boss height. And now my boss height is actually the same as this thickness. So what I need to do is to move the origin of the boss from here out to here. So we can do that by using the thickness. So we will take the sketch, look at its attachment, go to its position, Z position, and we'll call that DD, DD thickness. And then if we tab away from there, you should see that that's sitting. So now it's sitting right on this surface. And if I change this thickness, that boss is going to move with it because it's dynamic. Now looking at sketch again, we're going to put the two holes that go in here. So let's do that. We're going to go back to our part design and we'll open a new sketch. And this time it's going to be in the XY plane. We're going to go back, we're going to turn our model back on. So we do that by clicking on the part and then just hitting the space bar. And there's our model. And then I'm going to hit this to do a view section so that I can see the plane. And then I'm going to pop two holes in here. Uh, one's on this side and one's on this side. And I'll close that. We'll make those through holes. So we use a pocket. And we're going to say through all and reversed. And there's our holes. Now, this one we have to be a little careful because it's actually going through the boss at the moment. But we can change that. So we can say through actually two first. How about that? And it won't go all the way up. It'll only come through to this face. So we'll check. We change that so that it works that way. Now, what we can do is set up the dynamic data for these. And we're going to set these up with position two. So we need to position them. And we need their diameter. So their diameter is five, it looks like. So we're, we're doing a diameter five for both holes. And I think what we'll do in our dynamic data is we will make those two separate diameters so we can change them so they don't have to be the same diameter. So I'm not gonna make them equal or anything like that. 
So I'm going to add some more data here. I'm going to call this um, hole diameter one. And I'm going to call that five. And then I'm going to say hole diameter two. And I'm going to call that five for now. And you next a y coordinate for each hole. So I'm going to say uh, hole one x and it looks like the x would be 10 and i'm going to say hole 2 x and that's also going to be 10 and i'm going to say hole 1 y and that looks like it's going to be six. And hold two Y. I'm going to call that six right now. And so that gives us some more dynamic data that we can use. And we can use it from here. So let's go back into part design. Now I'm jumping back and forth just so that you can follow along. Uh, obviously, if you know exactly what you're doing, you can do all this in one go, be a little bit quicker. That's entirely up to you. Okay, so I know that my part, and I'm going to turn the model back on so we can see it. I know my part straddles this uh, axis because I made it symmetric. If you remember, I made it symmetric to the plane. So I know that's the center line. Now what I need to do is to figure out how am I locating these two. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to dimension it. I'm going to dimension it from here to here. Say OK. I'm going to dimension it from, I need to dimension it from here to here. Say OK. And then I'd like to drag that down out of the way. Drag that up out of the way. Then we need dimensions that go from here to here. Say OK. And a dimension that goes from here to here and say OK. So now I have my coordinates. Those are my X and Ys. And then I want to say this has a dimension. And I'll say OK for that. And this one has a dimension. Say OK for that. Now when we've got all that done, you can see those holes are fully constrained. So now what we need to do is to apply our dynamic data. So we're going to do that. This one's easy because this is going to be our, let's just open up our dynamic data, our whole 2x is going to be 10. So we're going to, we're going to edit that one. There we go. It wasn't open for some reason, but now we've got it. td dot, td whole diameter, no, whole x or hold two X. We'll say OK. So that one's done. Now this one is going to be a little bit different because its X is 10 from there. So this is going to be that length minus 10. So minus its X. So there's a little bit of math we need to do here. So we're going to apply that We'll go to this dimension. And this one's going to equal dd dot dd length minus dd dot dd whole one x. That should be 50. 
So that gives us 10 from there, which is what we wanted. So again, it, it'll, it based on this length, we want it to be 10 from there, but we, we don't want to use this as a dimension point. So what we're doing is we're dimensioning from back here, but we're just calculating where that will be. And then from this center, so now the dimensions that we have are actually from the outer edge. So we know that this distance from here to here is our width divided by two. And then we can do the width divided by two and subtract whatever that distance should be. So let's do that. So it's gonna be dd dot dd width divided by two. So that would give us 15. And then we're gonna remove or minus dd dot whole two y. dd dot dd whole two y. It's better if you pick them off here, to be honest with you. That way you don't mistype it. So that's gonna give me nine. And I'll say okay. And then I'm going to take this dimension, do the same thing, but with uh, whole ones y. So dd dot dd width divided by two minus dd dot dd whole one y and say okay and then these two sometimes it won't jump open but that's okay this is dd dot dd whole two diameter and this one is dd dot dd whole one. Oh, in the wrong thing there. Oh, oh. Whole diamond to one. And for now, those are the same dimension, but we can change them. So that looks good, that looks good. Let me just check my dynamic data because I think my Y should have been six. 15 minus six is nine, yeah, that's correct. Perfect, so everything looks good. And we will say close. And now these holes are dynamic, they're driven by dynamic data and we can modify them as we please. So we separate them so they can be different size holes. Now the final thing is we have to locate this boss. And so we're gonna do that. We know it's um, 30 millimeters from here. So we'll just go in and locate that now. And what I'm gonna do is go back into my dynamic data. And I'm gonna add another feature and it's gonna be boss height. and I'm going to call it Z height as opposed to the height of the boss which is this bit here this is my Z dimension so actually I can just call it boss Z and we'll call that value 30 and we'll say OK and then we'll go back into our Drawing, we'll go back into our drawing, into our sketch for our boss, which is this one. Then we just want a dimension that goes from there 
to there. And it's actually going to be um, dd dot dd height minus dd dot dd boss z, which is 25 because it's 30 from the top. The whole thing is 55, so we're gonna that'll get us right in the right spot, and then we we'll close that. So that's what we have. And now we have a fully dynamic um, part that we drew. And if we want to change it, of course, we can go into our dynamic data. And if I want that boss to be a bit bigger, I can look at my dynamic data here and say my outside diameter is going to be 15. And there, my boss has changed. And if I want my boss height, so I want to move that up. So my boss Z right now from here down to here is 30. If I make it 20, move my boss up. And so everything is dynamic and is driven by this dynamic data. And we can create the part as we want it to be. So if you've enjoyed this video, if it makes sense to you, if, if you have fun with it, uh, give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those below. I will answer them. I answer every uh, comment that people make, even if it's only a thank you. Um, depends on what the comment is. But I try to help if somebody has any problems, I try to help them to solve it. Uh, I do believe that this is a good way for you guys to learn Free CAD. I want everybody to understand, be able to work with Free CAD because I think it's a good tool and I really support the software. I think it's a, a great um, piece of software. I, it's phenomenal to actually have access to a CAD system like this uh, that is free. Um, also, if you haven't done so already, a lot of people watch my channel and they don't subscribe. Now, you'll be doing me a favor if you would subscribe. I am trying desperately to get this channel to be a little bit bigger than it is. We're already at 17,500 subscribers, but I'd like to, to get a little bigger than that. One of the reasons is uh, from, those, uh, from the subscriptions, I can um, generate more views, and from the more views, obviously, you get a little bit of advertising revenue. And it helps me then to buy equipment. I need to upgrade my laptop that's coming up. And obviously I'd like to be able to do that and, and do that through the channel so that I have a dedicated laptop that I can do these videos. Um, I apologize for the lack of production lately. I started a new job and it's taken a lot of my time, but I've figured out a way to actually get some time to be able to do this. So again, if you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up, Give it a subscribe, give it, a, give it the old like, and uh, let me know if you have comments. The comments help too if you just have a comment. The more comments you get, the more YouTube's algorithm will promote your video and it will get out there. So please feel free to leave comments. Thanks, and I will see you in the next video.